everyone, my name is Nick, and today we are continuing our exploration of this Shopify section rendering API. Specifically, we're using it to open a dynamic product modal that will be accessible on the featured section of the Dawn uh, homepage. If you prefer to follow along via blog form or to get the full GitHub repo with all the code, check the links in the description, but let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is make a duplicate of the Dawn theme, and we're going to go into the sections folder and create a new file. It's going to be a liquid file, and we're going to call it custom product modal. Now, I have a large portion of CSS that I'm just going to copy and paste from that GitHub repo so that we don't have to take time to type it all out. So I'm going to remove everything by default and paste this in. So uh, you can see that we have quite a bit going on here, and you should definitely take the time to see what's really going on. But for now, we're going to move on to putting in the HTML or liquid. So below this style tag, I'm going to go ahead and paste this. Now, this is our container. This takes up the uh, entire width and height of the screen, but this is the modal content. So this is what's actually the pop-up with the white background. And you can see that we have the product title, the featured image, the description, the price, and an add to cart. So the next thing we need to do is add some JavaScript so that we can make this dynamic and use that section rendering API. So if I go to the bottom of the HTML, I'm going to paste in this script tag. and here we can walk through a little bit of what is happening. So on the window load, we're going to run this block of code here. Now we're setting up a, a function called open modal. We're also adding some event listeners and we can see that we're doing some uh, cart Ajax cart calls. And right here is where our section rendering API is being called. So this first function open modal, it contains all the logic to open and close our modal uh, to make it pop up or to have it close if you click on the X in the corner or if you click on the background because it's annoying to not be able to close a modal. So we want the background to have a click event listener where it will close it automatically. Now this, let's see here. So this right here is the event listener that's checking if the user clicks on this quick view button so that we know to open the modal and right here is the actual URL that we are calling to the section rendering API. So you'll see right here at the end, we need to add our dynamic section ID. And we're going to get that after we save this file and add it to theme customizer. We'll find it in the inspector. So stay tuned for that. And then further down here, we have an event listener that's also checking for the add to cart, um, add to cart click event so that we can add this product to cart using the Ajax cart API. And then we are going to um, navigate to the cart page. Now, before we leave this file for a moment, we need to add one more thing in here, which is the schema, the section schema, so that we can add this as a section within our customizer and make it as easy as possible. You'll see it has the name quick view modal, and we will see that here in a minute in the theme customizer. But in the meantime, let's head over to the a different file. Uh, by the name uh, card product under the snippets folder. And here's where we're going to add that uh, quick view link. If we scroll down, and we're looking for uh, right here. And we are just going to add an H4 ZNX of 99. Ooh, struggling with typing today. So this part is rather important in this data target is where we're actually putting the product handle. And the reason this is important is because we're actually accessing this value in our JavaScript in the other file. So this is uh, crucial that it be added here. Okay, so now if we save this, and if we save this file as well, and I'll just point it out right here. This is, like I just said, this is where we're referencing that um, the product handle so that we can ensure that we're requesting the correct product information. So now let's open up the theme customizer and I'm gonna add a section and it's called quick view. And if I add it like so and hit save, Let's now view a preview. 
Okay, now when I open a preview, we'll uh, see that it is not here yet, and that's okay. We actually need to get our section ID, because remember, if we don't add that in, uh, we will not be able to make this work. So I'm gonna come into the inspector, and I'm going to search for modal section. You're gonna see that I have this data section attribute here, which I've added so that we can copy this long string. You're gonna know it's the section ID because it starts out template dash dash. So I'm gonna copy this entire thing right here and go back into our code. And then right here, I'm going to replace this. All right, now if we save and refresh, Okay, so I made one mistake here. If we go back to the cart product file, there's actually a few places where this cart information is being uh, is set with a couple of liquid conditional statements. So we just wanna make sure that we add that H4 tag, that one that has our quick view label um, to each of those locations. And if we do that and we hit save, we should now see our quick view here. And if we click, it will pop up and make sure that you have a description uh, set on the actual product, otherwise it'll just be blank. But uh, this is basically a starting point where you can then customize and make this look a lot better, of course. Now, one of the main things that I wanted to focus on while I was creating this was how the section rendering API was able to get this product specifically, uh, how to get its information and its characteristics. And the answer to that is because when you look in the actual API call, you'll see that the URL is slash products target data, and then we're doing the section ID portion, which means that it is rendering this template, or this section rather, in the context of this product. Again, remember we're getting this target data, of this, uh, this is the product handle that we're grabbing from the actual HTML that is set right here. So if you want the product object available within your section that you're rendering, um, then you need to have the product handle and you need to make sure that you're including the correct URL as part of that. Um, and if we hit add to cart, you'll see that we have a successful add to cart and it navigates to the home, uh, excuse me, the cart page for us. So this has been a short tutorial on using the section rendering API. I hope this has been helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions or thoughts in the comments and I'll see you next time.